Hello brothers, I am making this video to aid and assist with training with Zoom for congregation meetings. Specifically, what I'm going to talk about is how to set up your home computer system to operate Zoom to display media in a manner that's clean, it's not distracting to the friends, that way we don't have issues with seeing mouse or the friends really seeing what's going on behind the scenes as you're displaying the media. We're going to do it very similar to the way we do at the Kingdom Hall so that it's no distraction and we can have a good, crisp meeting. So now what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through step by step one, the way you need to set up and configure your computer. Now, ideally, um, the best thing to do would, is to have your computer set up so that you have a two screen display. And I'll show you how to do that. Then we'll go over what programs you need to be running on your computer. There are three programs that you need to be running, JW Library, Zoom, and a third one is in the case, in case you have say a speaker um, who has um, extra media that's not in JW Library, it would be good for you to have VLC Media Player uh, running on your computer and configured the way the branch asks it to be configured for the for meetings. Once we go over all that setup, I will show you how to start the Zoom meeting and how it looks on the other end once we start sharing our screen. Okay, so here we are. This is my computer setup. I'm doing this from uh, my Surface. Uh, it would be the same setup if you were doing it from a desktop. Uh, the, the computer doesn't really matter that much. Uh, if you're doing it from a, a Mac, you should be able to do it the same way, although I don't know the um, specifics and how you get a Mac to multi-display because I don't use one myself but I'm assuming it's pretty similar. So the first thing we're gonna do, you see I have a second display here, my main computer. I'm just going to plug in to my display port on my Surface. Now once I plug into the display port on the Surface, as you can see, it automatically, the, the recognizes that I have a second display going. But just in case you do it and you don't know where to go to configure your second display or how to configure your second display, if you right click, it will open up a dialog box and you go to display settings. So now here in our settings menu, you're in display settings and you can see your two displays. And just for reference, you can click identify. And now you can see which displays are which and you can move them around. So I can move display two over here since that's how um, it's set up in real life. That way it just makes it a little easier to work with when you're, when you're um, putting, moving between displays. As a word of caution, when you have multiple displays set up like this, this is not mirroring. So you notice you are not seeing what's on my main screen on the second display. These are, okay? And so one way in which we do that is if we come down here in our multiple display settings, you can set it up to duplicate or mirror displays. Now, if you set it up like that, now it will mirror in the second display what's on the first display. But that's not what we want. What we want to do is to extend these displays. That will give us a, it's almost like it's widening our, our view or our displays. Okay, so we can, one thing that you can do between displays is you can take a window and you can move it to your other display. Okay, so you see I can move it 
into that display there and then I can bring it back into my display here okay that's what extending the displays allows you to do and as you can see because I didn't save it put it back that way now when I move this window I can move it the in the direction that um that I have it set up for okay so now we have our computer configured for our display settings. Now we want to make sure that we have our apps downloaded. So we have JW Library, which I'll move out here. We have VLC Media Player. And we'll, we have Zoom Media Player. Or, or Zoom. Now, as far as the JW Library app goes, if we open up JW Library, one thing we want to do in JW Library is we want to come down to the settings menu. And let me bring you in a little closer so you can see this. Okay, now we're in JW Library and down here, this little gear like symbol is settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the toggle button that says play video on second display. Once we do that, JW Library is now going to take over our second display. So let's go back to home. Now I'm going to zoom out and show you how that will look. So this should be very familiar to you. Um, it's what we use at the Keenum Hall. That's how it's seen um, when you're working on the desktop at the Keenum Hall. And that display with JW uh, in, the, in the corner and the year's text is what the congregation sees. So they don't see you working on JW Library, and that is the benefit to having your... your um, displays in extend and not in duplicate. Now we're going to shrink JW library down so that we can work in other apps at the same time. So we're going to have multiple windows running at the same time. So let's say we wanted to display a picture. How would we do that? Well, we can select our, all right, let's go to our meeting. Let's go to a meeting. Okay. And we're gonna open up our article. Now there's many ways we can do that. If we remember in our meetings tab, we have the uh, media folder. So show media. And just like at the Kingdom Hall, when we click on that picture, it comes up over there. Okay? Or we can do it from the actual study article. And we can minimize that and we can X out down at the bottom. So we can be in our, in our study article following along. And when it's time to play the picture, we can click on it. And then as you see, we can change pictures as well. And we can X out. We can do the same thing for playing our, our videos for the meeting. So for instance, the song, go to show media. And now here's one, one area that we wanna make sure that we do prior to the meeting. Let me um let me bring this up so that it can be seen better. I'm going to bring you in real quick. Well, no, we don't even have to bring you in. Just know this. We are streaming um the media. I'm sorry, the the meeting. So we have a live stream going on. The songs should be downloaded. Any video you have should be downloaded at highest quality 
Okay? That way, because even though you can press the video and it will play, if you are trying to stream a stream, you're going to have lag issues. You're going to have issues with the with the media being displayed on the other end being choppy. And so we want to, as much as possible, eliminate that. So uh, one thing that we want to do is make sure that the media we display is actually downloaded and not streaming as we're trying to then stream it out, streaming in as we're trying to stream it out as well. But it should be saved to the hard drive. So now when we play our song, just like at the Kingdom Hall, it will show up on our second screen and start to play. So now, how does this uh, work with Zoom? And why go through the trouble of setting up a second display when we're in a Zoom meeting. Well, let's start a Zoom meeting and then we'll show you the benefits that this has over trying to do it on a single display. So, when we start up Zoom, there we go, now it's opening. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. I had to log back into to Zoom because I was signed into a different device. So we're going to start our meeting. Now, there's different ways you can start meetings. Um, likely, you guys know this by now. You can schedule a meeting. Uh, you can also, when you schedule a meeting, and when you schedule a meeting, it will come up over here under uh, your scheduled meetings. Uh, when you schedule a meeting, you can set different parameters uh, for the meeting so that, um, well, let's just go ahead and do it. Let's schedule a meeting. So you can set up different parameters as far as when the meeting is, the duration of the meeting, um, how how you want the meeting to come on your calendar, and, and different things like that. So you can you can schedule a meeting so that it's reoccurring so that brothers and sisters who are getting the link to your meeting can simply click in and sign in for the meeting uh, on the same link every every week. So now I'm going to start a new meeting. OK. We're going to join with computer audio. And we have our video there. And so this is also another familiar thing to most by now is the Zoom meeting interface. So really quick, we have our mute button. And this also controls uh, our different microphone inputs. Same with our video. Um, this is new security, so we'll have to play around with that. We know Zoom has been in the news lately, and so this is something that's uh, been added to their system. Uh, manage participants. This is uh, something that the host or co-host will be paying attention to. Um, this is how brothers and sisters would raise their hands and... and uh, and things like that is in the participants tab. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite. And I am going to invite, but I'm not really going to do an invite. I'm just simply going to log into another computer from another account and show you how what we have set up will display and look on the other end. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. So here we are in a Zoom meeting. It's all set up and now we can manage our participants and things of that nature. But what we're going to focus in on this meeting is our screen share. And because this is one of the one of the uh, things 
that is going to really make the meeting go by in a in a clean and well well prepared manner so when we go to screen share we have different options and one of the options that we have is to share JW library we have the option to share a whiteboard screen one but you notice it says we can share screen two when we click on share screen two and we go to share screen we get this share tab that comes up in that share tab we want to go over to these buttons and we want to click optimize share for full screen video clip now what the friends are going to see on the other side when we're sharing is what we're displaying on screen two. So right now they will see our JW year text. But let's say we want to share the song. So the host will come on, they will start to, to speak. We don't want to have the screen share up because that's going to take over the screen. We only want to do this when it's time to start sharing some content. Okay? So when the, when the host says we want to go to song 135, we're, we're sitting like this and we're waiting. So now we want to go to song 135. And he's going to introduce the song. Now we hit share. We click on our song. It starts to play. And now this is how it's going to look on the other end. So as you can see on this side, all we have is a nice clear screen. Now I'm going to go back. I'm going to stop the uh, screen share and I'm going to leave the camera here. That way you can see how the transition is made from screen from speaker to screen share and how it's done without um, any kind of uh, what's the word any kind of distracting elements involved And as you can see, there was no distracting elements floating in and out of the screen. They never saw what it was that I was doing on my computer to start the meeting or to start the media for the meeting. Now the same principle would apply. So let's say I have a picture that I know is coming up. I can cue that picture up here in at home and click on the screen share. And now I'm waiting for when the brother is going to ask for the picture. And when he asks for the picture, I simply click share. And now I know when this screen comes up, I am sharing that picture that's on my second screen with the rest of the friends. And it's just that easy. Now, occasionally you will have a meeting. Occasionally you will have a meeting where a brother will have uh, media for his meeting that he will give to you. So I'm going to close out Zoom now. 
Because the principle is the same for anything that we want to display. And I'll close out JW Library as well. And as you can see, when we close out JW Library, our second display went back to extend mode, showing my desktop or the backdrop for my desktop. The other thing that would be helpful is if you had VLC Media Player downloaded. I'm not going to get into how to configure VLC in this particular uh, tutorial. Uh, perhaps I'll do another tutorial about configuring VLC, but there is a write-up uh, that the brothers can give you that was supplied through the branch on how to configure VLC Media Player to display uh, media on on um, another device. So let me see if I have a picture here just for the sake of bringing something up. Uh, no, I don't see any pictures right now. Here, let's do this. I don't know if this would, that's not going to display. Okay. I'm going to bring up a picture. Let's copy that in there. Okay. So, if I zoom out here, when I display that picture in VLC Media Player, if I play that picture, no, this is not coming up completely, and I have to I have to do a little work. But it, you kind of have to get the pictures ready um, in VLC Media Player. There, I think there was an adjustment made to the way the software works. And to get it to display full screen sometimes is a problem and an issue. So you have to, there's a um, button down here. It's uh, like the full screen button to toggle the video in full screen. And so you're going to have to play around with that button to get the picture to display right once you get it configured. But once you get it configured, just like in, in, um, the JW library, once you have the media where you want it now you can just share your second screen and nobody knows what's going on nobody knows that the picture was looking like this at one point and then you had to go through and make it look right you, those are the type of things having it in the second having it in a second display instead of on your main screen that you can do so that the friends are not distracted by what you're doing during the meeting and we can all worship Jehovah and uh as the scripture says in a decent arranged way. Well, thank you. Hopefully this uh this video was helpful. And I encourage you all to play around with it at home if you can. That way when we uh have our meeting it will be something that will bring praise and honor to Jehovah. Thank you. Have a good day. Stay safe. Cover your face. Bye-bye.